today what I'm going to do is not going to talk about tech on Android. This is a technical talk by the way, but it is not going to be like feature A, feature B, feature C on Android, but rather some of the questions that I always hear and the answers that we give so that you guys have a better perspective and a much or a larger picture when you're actually thinking on Android. That is me in pictures. If you've ever attended my talk, this is how I started. So I'm going to be boring. That's me in the center. I code all the time, uh, trying to figure out and Sometimes when I figure out, I look like that. I was one of the first guys to be a Google developer expert from Southeast Asia way back in 2013. Uh, and before that was way before I joined Google. I work as a senior developer advocate at Google. I manage partner Devrel, working with the top partners in India, helping them build on our products really well. And tell feedback to our product engineers so that there's an iteration on our products which match the market better. So that's like, like I said, the top five questions that people ask me all the time. That's what I'm going to discuss. Let's jump right in. First question, and this has always been a question for us, is should I do native app or a PWA? Some of you said PWA is what they're going to work on. Some of them did already have it uh, in the partner teams, but PWA versus native, it is not an or question. It's only sees an and. We don't prefer one over the other. It's not like we love the web, so we are saying that web is better than the native apps, or native apps is better than the web. No, it's not that case. Uh, it is more of an and, and the things to consider are, what is the type of solution that you have? Do you have, uh, uh, what is the demography of users that you're actually targeting to? Are you targeting somebody who's in a tier two city with a low bandwidth, or is it somebody who's in a tier one city uh, and is used to apps? So it's, it, it basically depends on the solution that you're trying to build. It basically depends on the demography of users that you actually already have. So don't consider this to be competing technologies. They are things that go hand in hand so that your service actually reaches to a lot more users. Example, Ola, when they released their PWA, their app usage did not drop, but they actually got a spike of usage and conversions on their web PWA. We showcased Ola last year at, uh, at IO. I'd worked closely with them to build their PWA. Uh, and I know the, that's why I know the stats. Uh, it did not drop their uh, app usage, but it did spike on the other end, which is the web usage. And that means more users were using the app. It doesn't mean that people shifted from one, one type of solution to the other one. It was just more people were using. So do not think of it to be competing technologies, rule one. Look at it as a way to reach a larger audience, a demography of users that you have never actually touched earlier. You, by actually giving the advantage of PW, you may, may reach to these users. So, Look at it that way. Second one, Kotlin versus Java. Is Java going away? That's classic question. Java isn't going anywhere. It's going to be still there. We have given a first class support to Kotlin also. And a lot of people ask, especially students ask us uh, whether they should study Kotlin first or Java. My suggestion is don't like stick too much to the language and the syntax part of it. Uh, Kotlin is more of a functional programming language, object-oriented and functional, but that functional programming language per se is really, really important to understand. Uh, if you're a developer who's now studying languages and you're like writing a lot of code, get into the habit of figuring out functional programming if you have not already started on it. It would be good because you're gonna work with a lot of data going further and functional programming languages are more suited or is definitely gonna be actually uh, used a lot more in it. It doesn't mean Java is any worse you cannot write your projects in Java, no. Majority of the uh, code base which is running on your device is on Java. Uh, if you take your phones right now, the apps that are running on them, nearly all of them are gonna be in Java, and a few of them are in Kotlin also, or parts of Kotlin. But Kotlin has this amazing advantage that you can actually have multi-language projects. So you can have Kotlin and Java in your same Android app, and they, don't, they will not, you don't have to think of like, oh, I have to convert my entire code base to this new language for it to run. No, it doesn't work that way. So it allows this uh, mixed language projects, and that's the advantage that you should take. So you can slowly migrate out. A lot of the people I'm working with who are actually adopting Kotlin, the way they're doing is anything new they're writing, like a new class or a new function or a new, <coughs> new library that they're writing, they're trying to write that in Kotlin, but keeping their existing code base as it is. They're not trying to convert their hundreds and thousands of lines of code at one sprint and then work completely in Kotlin from the next day onwards. Kotlin needs certain constructs to be understood really well. Uh, one concern that people have been raising with Kotlin, at least in the larger uh, teams, is that not everybody is picking up at the same pace. 
So if I have a team of 50 people, unless everybody in that team knows Kotlin really well, I cannot convert my code base out. Java has a few advantages too. It has a huge developer community. You have a ton of books out there. You have very opinionated uh, solutions that are there. And there is a ton of open source projects down there from which you can learn great how to write better code. So there is advantages on both sides. Kotlin is really concise. You can have amazing developer productivity once you start uh, getting used to it. So all that, there's advantages on both sides. Start with a mixed language project and then move on. That makes it a smooth curve of kind of migrating off to Kotlin if that's your intention. Things I should not miss. Uh, this is like more than one answer to it, but the things that I feel a lot of the community in our region misses a little bit in terms of development is platform differences. Android now yearly changes. There's a new version of Android every year. Now it's at Oreo. Uh, and the next version is going to come out soon. Uh, and every year we'll have a new version where there are significant changes on the platform side as well as the developer API side. A lot of developers here hide behind the fact of a device is, is fragmented. That's why I have a lot of crashes. It is not, it is true and false, but if you want to write app that does not have a lot of crashes and works with a variety of devices out there, that's possible. Just take most of the uh, top apps that are out there, not just Google apps, but other third-party apps. They run beautifully on a uh, majority of the devices out there. The platform difference is something that you should not run away from. Please understand that gives you a perspective of how the platform is evolving. And will you, will, you might be thinking that, oh, there's only one X percentage or one or two percentage of devices which are using this particular platform right now. Should I target it? Maybe not, but having an understanding of that helps you make decisions today which will not fail on those devices tomorrow. When majority of devices move, you don't have to redo everything all over again. So have an understanding of the platform differences. Next one is tools. How many of you guys write code for Android? Great. Keep your hands up. No, no, don't leave them for a second. How many of you guys use uh, something like SysTrace? Those who use it, keep your hands up. Rest of them can go down. Uh, one, two. This is realistic world. You guys are no different from a general majority of people. You need to know your tools. They will help you code faster. They will help you build solutions better. They will help you identify problems faster. So if you're not really investing your time and effort in understanding the tools, please do so. Uh, for some reason, a lot of us love to tax our brains on debugging problems, on memory uh, leaks and stuff like that, which you can, using a tool, solve a lot faster without and use that time to do some study something better or further. So get some proficiency on the developer tools. There are a bunch of developer tools. Like SysTrace was, it's been there for at least five years. That I'm 100% I'm sure it's been there for, I think it's six years since SysTrace got launched. So if you haven't learned it already, well, you're behind. Uh, debugger, again, something that should be like used every day if you're writing code and, and as running through stuff. Um, there is battery analyzer, battery historian. All these are really important. Battery historian especially quite important for our region. If you're writing something which is very regional uh, or uh, hyperlocal, we have the lowest average battery life in the world. India has, India as a region has one of the lowest ba uh, battery life of 17 hours or something, which means the code that you write needs to be more efficient. Not just you, everyone needs to be efficient, but unless and until you know where you stand, it's very difficult to kind of improve. So using these tools will give you a great understanding of where you stand. User research. Uh, don't think that you know your users really well. Uh, go back and iterate and understand what the user wants by talking to them, getting data, data-driven data model that uh, Deepak mentioned earlier. Again, so user research is another area. If you don't have a great understanding of it, learn more about that. That's, that's really important. Develop a policy. I will think about this later is a bad, bad idea. You most probably will get kicked out of the store and your app suspended or terminated when you have, when you're like really relying on it to re create a lot of revenue. And it's becoming really big. You want to understand what the policies are. You want to actually look at the differences or changes in policy. When you, when you have the developer account, we actually, every time we send an update to the policy, we send you a notification. That red notification dot on the console on the top <clears throat> in the right, don't ignore it. It, it's boring sometimes to read through these legal documents, but you really need to understand because your app can get terminated. 
and that means you're never going to get rains, that one, and you're going to lose that one back onto the store, and then all your users and all the work that you've done so far to acquire these users is lost in one, one day. You don't really want to kind of risk that. Understand developer policy. And the last thing is please do learn from open source. There's a ton of libraries for Android, Java out there that you can learn from. Contribute to them. It will help you develop a thick skin, one, because sometimes people are very clear and straight to your face that the code is not good enough, if it is not good enough. But they are also the best teachers out there. If you ask them why do you feel it's like that, they will give you the right reasons and it will help you fix that. Which means you're going to become better a lot faster. And they will, and there's a ton of code that actually you can leverage from. You don't have to invent everything. Most of the apps that you write, 80% of code is coming from the library. About 20% is what you guys write. 80% is straight from retrofit, uh, glide, react, okay? And that's going further now. <laughs> but still, all of these things, right? But try and, when you get time, try and look a little deeper into these libraries to understand how they're written. Maybe you could just remove half of it because you're not using that half and save a ton of space for the user. At the minimum, you'll understand great pra coding practices because a lot more heads are actually coming together to kind of write these open source libraries. So do learn from that. New things in Android. Even though uh, some people have a feeling that Android is gone, done, dusted, it's, there are too many engineers, there's always new things that we're releasing which from, on which you can kind of create proficiency and stand out. AR, VR is a classic example for it. How many people are building for that? There are so many solutions. A few of you are good, great to hear that. Uh, but a lot of people are actually, there is less engineers on these things than we really require. And there is, I mean, with AR, VR, you are extending the canvas with a 2D canvas into a 3D world, right? Which gives you a lot more space to give an experience, which is really amazing and, and would be like a first mover in the market. So AR, VR is one area. TensorFlow Lite, which is basically the library that we're using to kind of do machine learning on the device. Uh, yes, this is important in our region, for our region especially because of the connectivity issues. You can't always send all the data down to the server. When I say our region, it's not just India, it's Southeast Asia that I'm actually talking about. That's the region I'm most familiar with. So we have, we have Geo, which does not give us worry about, uh, uh, or stop the worry about data for us, but Indonesia, they still pay for that money. So if you want to extend it to China or Indonesia, anywhere else, your solution, which is taking a ton of data today, uh, which Indian users are ignoring uh, because of the free data they get, but other geographies will actually have that problem. So don't limit your thinking to just our geography and our situations. Uh, things like on-the-device machine learning is going to be important. Assistant is a new platform that we have. E extend your experiences to that. There are a ton of experiences that can be built for a Google Home. We have voice community based on voice, which you don't really need the user to take a phone, unlock, go to the app. I can say, hey, Google, and do that. And the next generation of users really like that. My daughter, I have an eight-year-old daughter, she talks to Google Home as, it, as if it is a person. Hey, Google, tell me about this. And I, when I do it, I'm very formal about it. Hey, Google, tell me. And I, I try to be a grammatically right now. My daughter is like, I don't care. I little tell me anyways. So the thing that you need to understand is technology, the next generation of people are actually adopting it as a lot, lot faster. So you actually will reach a lot better, larger set of users and you can actually get a better set of uh, uh, users for your platform by actually extending into the new things. Android TV, I want to call this out. This has been there for some time. But the number of apps on this platform is like handful. It is one place where people spend a ton of time. Second to the phone screen, the TV screen is where people spend, I mean, general public. Techies are not in general public. They are a different bunch. We have laptop screens. <laughs> but general public does spend a lot of time there. So TV actually becomes a way of increasing reach. And it is not as difficult as you think. It's not a completely new platform. You're building on Android uh, uh, principles all over again. It's fragments and activities and a bunch. There are certain restrictions and certain design patterns that you could apply there, but they're not diff difficult. When we ran TV workshops, a majority of the team was able to write a working prototype in that one single day for their service. And then they went about, in, in a week or two, they had the things polished out in terms of UI and 
uh, UX and things like that. But it isn't that difficult to extend an ex working app into these platforms. So jump in and try some of that, some of these technology. IoT is another area which is coming up. A lot of people love to kind of work on some of these things. But uh, let me quickly move on in the interest of time. ML in Android. When do you think you last used machine learning? I saw a bunch of you guys using it today morning. Do you think when you use that? Photos. Photos is a place. Gmail. When you select text. I'm, I'm talking about Android Oreo right now, where these are places where we have better cache management using ML. We have uh, Pixel Visual Core, which basically is the photo. The Pixel device has this. The camera one has the second layer of machine learning, which is actually enabling it to make the photos a lot better. So there's a ton of places where you're using it already. So extending your solutions to use some of these things, and it's not like machine learning is a technology of tomorrow. It's already here, and you're using it all throughout without recognizing it a lot of times. So in Android also, you have plenty of opportunities and plenty of data. We are a geography rich with the data because of the volume. The top apps, uh, I mean, when, when I talk to my colleagues in the US, at some of my top apps, they say, oh, we have like uh, 30 million installs. I'm like, I have two apps with 120 million installs. And they're like, 120 million installs. Imagine the amount of data these guys would be having. So it's really easy because of the volume of usage that we have. It's really easy for us to kind of get a lot of data. Quality of data, that's a different problem altogether, but good data. There's a lot of data to start with. So machine learning models can be trained very quickly. Experience can be personalized. So there's a lot of opportunities in these things. And what I wanted to call out was these opportunities today. Uh, and if there are one thing that you want to take away is Android is not going anywhere. It's not, it's not on the way, it's, it's not exiting and it's not on the way out. There's plenty of opportunities still out there for you guys to go and build on these things. And uh, you should capitalize on it. But stick with the trends that change. Maybe Kotlin start studying a functional programming language, use some of the new features like machine learning. Do, don't think of things as competing, but as complementary. PWAs, uh, hybrid apps, they are not competing, but they're using, allowing you to reach to more people. So having these change, slight shifts in mindsets will actually get you to have solutions which actually will work for a lot more of your users and a lot better for users. Thank you. <laughs>